Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1. Now the Bible says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. Did you hear that? He says, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heavens. To everything. To everything. To everything. When the Bible says everything, he means everything. He says to everything, the Bible says. To everything. To everything. That goes as far as everything. Somebody shout hallelujah. I can't give examples of everything because everything is everything. Everything. He says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Everything. To everything. So that means when God purposes under the heaven, the Bible says, in everything, he accords season and time. Isn't it? Your next success by divine purpose is ordained under the principles of season and time. Your next promotion, which comes from neither east nor west but from God, is designed to manifest itself under the element of season and time. That means everything that is going to befall you from today, as has been every day, is as a result of this powerful principle, season and time. Anywhere you accord divine purpose, anywhere you allude to divine purpose, if you're talking about God purposing, if you're talking about you in purpose, it will subject you to the principle of season and time if you live under the heavens. That means if you have not understood how the principle of season and time works, you're going to live a life that you cannot predict at all. And Christianity is not supposed to be a, a life, a walk, where you can't predict certain things. Of course, as a Christian, you will be unpredictable, right? But being unpredictable does not mean you do not predict. Who understands what I'm saying? Yes, people will look at you unpredictable. You are supposed to be a peculiar people. That means you're going to live a life of unpredictability. You're going to live a life beyond certain people expect you, and that's beautiful. But because you are unpredictable to people, it does not mean that you yourself should not be able to predict your days. When you understand that, you realize that success is not a mistake. I always say that. It's possible to live a good life in God. And it's possible to fail if you don't understand how the principles of this life work. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. And so when he says that to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, it means if you're talking about purpose, you can't disqualify season and times. You can't. Because God works in timetables. God works in time frames. He does not separate himself from such experiences. And if he does, then you must learn to work the same. Somebody shout hallelujah. You must learn to work the same. You must adapt. Right? Now, let's first begin with the key words because it's important for you to understand this. When you study the word there, season, to everything there is a season. Right? The word there for season is the mound. Right? And the mound is translated as appointed time. Now that is a little confusing. But I'll explain it later and you understand. Okay? So when the Bible says to everything there is a season, the word season there is the mound. And the mound means appointed time. Decided time. You understand it? And the, the word there and a time, the word there for time is time in the essence of the occurrence of an event. An experience. The now. Now is an event. Now is an occurrence. Whenever is an occurrence. Right? Whenever or now, both of them are occurrences and they're experiences. So the word there, time, represents a time of occurrence. Right? A time of experiences. But it's different from seasons, which are the appointed times. Both have the word time there, but one is used differently. And I'll explain this. In this instance, when we're talking about seasons, appointed times, decided times, those are the indications of the spirit realm where God divinely intervenes or evokes the ability of manifestation of particular issues, right? Now, when we're talking about time, time as of time, those are the events of the occurrences, the times of the occurrences, the times of the events, the times of manifestations, the times of experiences. You understand? So appointed times define time or times. You understand? Appointed times define what you will do in your timing. Oh, okay. If God says, in this period, I'm going to increase you, all right? He's right to say, in this appointed time, I'm going to what? Increase you. You follow? That's a season. You get it? But in those seasons of increase, they are events. They are occurrences. Their experiences that define the increase. You get it? Those are the times. Do you understand now? If God says, next year, I'm going to bless you. He has proclaimed an appointed time of blessing. Right? Now, in that very year, you get a new car. That's an event. You get a new house. That's an occasion, right? That's an occurrence. Now, according to scripture, that is what he defines as time. You get it now? So he says to everything, there is an appointed time and a time of event or a time of occurrence. You get it? So appointed times are seasons. And occurrences and events in time are the time that he's talking about. He says these two take place for every purpose under the heavens or on the earth. God functions in this equation. 
If you understand this equation, you will be in tune with the Spirit. I think it's in the Gospel of John where he speaks of a man who was at the pool of Bethesda. The Bible says for 38 years there was a season where the angels would come and trouble the water. That was a season. And the Bible says every time the waters are troubled, the man that steps in first is made whole of disease. You remember that? So in the times when the angels star or trouble the waters, that was the season of healing. Right? But it required the timing on who should get in first. If you get in later, the healing has gone. Who understands what I'm saying? So for 38 years, a man is sick. And why is he sick? Because every time he's getting in, the Bible says he has nobody to take him in. So another man gets in earlier and gets healed. And so he stays at the pool for another year. 38 years on one pool. But he can't get an answer. And you know, many believers don't see that this is not just a story of one man at the pool of Bethesda. It relates to so many people. And some call it waiting on the Lord. Do you understand? Until something is defined in your life, some of you are going to stay in the same state for many years. And I'm not going to mention what your pool is or what your infirmity is. It might not be physical. It might be emotional. It might be psychological. It might be financial. Whatever it is. 38 years. Because a man did not know how to discern the season and timing of the spirit. 38 years is at the pool and he didn't get an answer. The Bible says in the very Ecclesiastes chapter 3 where we're reading, the 11th verse, the Bible says he has made everything what? Beautiful in its time. He makes everything beautiful in its time. He ministers divine beauty to everything if it is timed in the spirit. And the Bible says, and also he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. He makes everything beautiful in time. You know, when you understand the timing of the spirit, he will beautify your destiny. People will look at you and say, her life is a beauty. Her ministry is a beauty. His marriage is a beauty. His children are a beauty. His education was beautiful to look at. Everything people will look at, your career will be beautiful. Your business, people will look at it and it will look beautiful. You attract the beauty that is of God. Somebody say, that's me right there. Say it again and say, that's me right there. You attract the beauty which is of God. It's possible. It's possible. Because he makes all things beautiful in their own time. In time. Once you understand that, once you understand how to relate to the seasonings of the spirit, every event will be beautiful. Every occurrence will be beautiful. Every occasion will be beautiful to look at. Say amen. Say amen. Now, what looks like a simple writing of Solomon? Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It was a very, very deep experience of the man that wrote it. Like I always tell you that God has given me the grace when I'm reading the word. The word for me has become an experience. Okay? And because the word has become an experience, I have been able to see things in the very word that we preach. And to sit in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, to see the experience of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it was very mind-blowing. This is one of the most prophetic sentiments in the Old Testament scripture. 
But you see, when we're talking about the prophetic, many of us are not fully informed about the anointing that goes with the prophetic ministry. Many of us know so little. The church of Jesus Christ, I think, needs help to understand how the dimensions of the prophetic work, and I believe the anointings within the prophetic. I'll give you an example. Did you know that there are about 12, could be slightly more, but I know of about 12 anointings in the prophetic. About 12 of them, right? And these are graces that sort of define the spectrum of what you and I call the prophetic. When you meet somebody and ask them, who is a prophet? Many of them define one grace, one function of the anointing, which is the seer. Right? That's what many people call the prophetic. The seer. The one who sees this and sees that and sees this and sees, I saw you got this and this is your, this is who you are, this is why you got this, this is what you eat, this is what you ate last week which is also part of, but it's only one of the dimensions of the prophetic. I know about 12. I have been blessed by the grace of God at least to function in seven of them. So I understand them fully. I know them. I know them to the glory of God. I know them. But I think one of the most beautiful, and I find for me, has really been so defining, has been the realm of revelation, mystery. The realm of mysteries. Some people don't know that the realm of mysteries is another kind of the prophetic anointing. That is why the book of Revelation is the last book in the Bible. It is the spirit of Revelation. It's the realm of mysteries. But every time they are demystified, the future is defined. When John is talking about the beast, when he's talking about the angels, when he's talking about the seals, when he's talking about all of these things, many present day prophetic people can't understand that language because many are in the class of the seer. But the book of Revelation actually speaks of the future. It's not the book of Revelation, it's the book of Revelation. That is why he says, that the testimony of Jesus Christ, he says, is the spirit of prophecy. And that is in Revelation. So John is saying, much as we are in the realm of revelation and mysteries, we are revealing things that we are seeing. This is the very spirit of prophecy, yet it is spoken forth as the oracle of the testimony of Jesus Christ. So that is why many people, when they read the book of Revelation, they can't understand it. Because it has to be seen with a prophetic eye. But again, not in the class of the seer. It's deeper than that. Who understands what I'm saying? So when I started to function years ago in the realm of the mystery, the mysterious, I started to see that the word of God is way deeper than many people can articulate. I started to see that sometimes some people don't understand the weight of the authority that is in the word of God because they don't see that it directly defines the person of Christ, his testimony, which is the spirit of prophecy. People don't see the prophetic dimension of the word of God. And that's why I pray that many of you flow in the realm of mystery. Because when revelation is revealed a certain way, you'll be so amazed at how the future is demystified. You will realize that your future does not need to be a mystery. You don't need me to tell you that on Thursday you're going to dress in blue. The revelation of the person of Jesus Christ carries enough eyes to define all the dimensions of the spirit to you. 
That is why when we get, for example, in the prophetic anointings of what, for example, we will call prophetic worship, many people can't connect to that because they think one-dimensional, the seer, or the man with the word of knowledge. You get it? They don't know that there are people who are anointed enough to worship you into a destiny. You get it? Because, like I say, many times it's spoken about one-dimensional, the seer, the one who can see with a spiritual eye. What of those who hear? Don't see with the eyes but can hear by the spirit. What of those who can smell and touch by the spirit? That which we have seen, touched, tested. You see, you must understand that it's deeper than many of us make it sound. And many of you are prophetic than you think. But because you're not seers, you think that you are no more men, no more people. Somebody shout amen. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 is a prophetic experience. This is a man of God, Solomon, tracking by the spirit the rotations of prophetic timelines. You see, why do I call them prophetic timelines? How many of you know that the time dimension is circular? That is why many of your watches move in what? Circles. The complete movement of 60 moves in circles from a center. It's a revelation. The prophetic realm has taught that the time dimension is circular. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 again, from the 15th verse, if we go down, he says, give me the amplified of that, that which is now already has been. Okay? And that which is to be already has been. And God seeks that which has passed by so that history repeats itself. If you read of the Bible, you'd understand it can only be what was because it has come back to the same point of rotation. Who understands what I'm saying? The time dimension is circular. And that is why when we get now into that experience of the prophetic ministry, you realize that every time you touch the time dimension, you start to see the circle folding. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, when God is speaking about the ministration of Samuel, he says, 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 16, he says, and he went from Yah, listen, to Yah in circuit or circle to Bethlehem and Gilgal and Mizpeh. He was always in a circle. Bethlehem, Gilgal, Mizpeh. Bethlehem, Gilgal, Mizpeh. And when you read the story of the person of Christ, you'll see those circles as well. You run around about the city. See, prophetically, there is nothing new under the sun. The degrees increase, but the events are the same. Who understands what I'm just trying to tell you? The degrees might either increase or decrease, but the events and occurrences of the spirit are the same. That which is now has already been. At one particular point, there was a great preacher. At one particular point, there will always be a great preacher. At one particular point, there was a great prophet. In one particular experience, there will always be a great prophet. At one particular point, there was a great worshiper. There will always be a great worshiper. At one particular point, there was a great teacher. There will always be a great teacher. History repeats itself. Only the dimensions vary. The degrees vary. But that which is now has already been. Somebody shout hallelujah. It has already been. And so I want you to look at these times and seasons in circular rotations. That's why they happen again. That's why the man at the pool of Bethesda has to wait for another 12 months. Because every year the circle comes back. The angelics come back in the same spot, trouble the waters. If he hasn't gotten the healing, they move on, make their circle again, 
again after 12 months they will come back in the same space or period shut the waters again the circle will always repeat itself that means if you've messed up there is opportunity to fix it if you understand how this rotation moves if things have not gone the way they are supposed to go you still have another chance wait for the next best opportunity god can still meet you he can still fix you he can still establish you he can still heal you he can still restore you but you must understand how the rotations work and by what speed they do because light defines time not the other way around light defines time it's night it's day it's day it's one day time has been given a definition in the narrative now thank god because the gospel is light because therein we can understand how to respond to the seasons and times of the spirit or create seasons and times of the spirit according to the gospel of our lord and savior jesus christ somebody shout hallelujah in Daniel chapter 2 verses 21 the bible speaks of the experience god even tells you that these are the creative avenues of the spirit realm that define the success of one man and the going down of the other he says and he changes the times and the seasons and when he does the bible says in the process he removes kings and sets up kings he giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding you see that that means whoa see he He has spoken about the setting up of kings and the pulling down of others. But I want you to understand that that when he changes the times and seasons, one, he removes kings. And when he removes kings, the Bible says he sets up kings. Now, you're going to see that after kings there is full colon. Meaning, what is following after is defining the kings that are set up. And he says and he giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding again full colon next verse and he revealeth the deep and the secret things and he knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth in him that means the way one king goes down and another king goes up is by the principle of what is revealed to the king If your revelation is stagnant, you pull it down. If your revelation increases, you go up. He says when he raises up one king, the Bible says he gives him understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things that he knows the things of darkness because in him is light. He starts to get things out of darkness, gives them to this man and become light to him. When that man has revelation and understanding, the secret things of God are revealed to him. One man is taken down and this guy is raised up. Tell your neighbor the future is for men who know. Kings are defined by the wisdom that operates on their life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Why because in every dispensation there is a demand of knowledge. There is a demand of revelation. There is a demand of the secret things. of God The problem with the church many of them only know the secret things in the hearts of men I know what you ate last week which is okay But what is in God Where is 2012 Where is 2030 Where is 2040 What has the next 100 years got to do with you What is in line with will and destiny for your life? What has God purposed you to be at the end of your life? I want to hear that also. Tell me what I ate last night. Thank you. Tell me my name. Thank you. But after telling me all that, tell me about my 60 years. Tell me about my 70 years. Tell me about my 80 years because God has told me by Psalms 90 that the number of my days must be known. The Bible says, "Teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts unto your wisdom." Not only events in the day, but I must know the end of my life. Because that's the foundation of the vision of God concerning my life. And right now we're in a dispensation where some are being set down. others are being lifted because 
of the seasons and the timing of the spirit. Ask your neighbor, where are you in this equation? Ask them again, where are you in this equation? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Thank God for the gospel. I say, thank God for the gospel. Now, I think some of you now understand why we choose this way. Thank God for the gospel. You're going to be elevated according to the level of how much you know. And I decree that God gives wisdom to your life, understanding to your life, and is revealing the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness. And it dwells in light, as light dwells in him. May God make things so plain to you. And as such, the king in you will rise. In the mighty name of Jesus. Give the Lord a mighty hand for praise. Many Christians did not know that. But Satan knows it. Satan knows it. Satan knows it. In Daniel chapter 7 verses 25. An experience is given when the sons of God are about to inherit the realm. Which is the kingdom. And Satan sees it coming. And the Bible says, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the sense of the Most High. He'll frustrate them and make them tired. In the time when they're supposed to be inheriting or entering or functioning in the realm of God. And the next verse says, and to think. The Bible says, to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Because he knows if he can change times and laws, your dreams are going to get frustrated. Your visions are going to get lost. Every divine conception is going to be aborted. He knows it. If you want to frustrate a child of God, change their timings. And here he's not talking about time or current events. The Greek word, eight. No, he's talking about again, the mound. He's talking about the appointed times of the spirit. He's saying change, frustrate them so they cannot design the appointed times of the spirit. And fix the laws of the spirit and change them. If you change those two, their visions are going to squat. Their dreams are going to die. Their spiritual conceptions are going to be aborted on the altars. And they are going to live like normal men. They will live like predictable men. They will live like they were not people who had encountered God. Satan knows if he has to frustrate you, he will have to frustrate you by destroying you with his principle. Because he knows the mound, the appointed times, are like the womb that holds vision. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 2 and 3, the Bible says, The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. For, he says, the vision is yet for unappointed, the mound, the appointed time. Visions are children in wombs of appointed times. Visions are children in wombs of season. Every season is an impregnation. Every delivery is a time or card. It. Every season, the mound is like a mother of vision. Your vision is being nurtured. Your vision is being kept in a womb. It's being incubated in the womb. When you have a vision of any dream that you have, the mound, at appointed times, preserve and raise and incubate this thing. And like the nine-month period, that's like the season. Are you hearing me? And the day you give birth, that's the time of manifestation, which is the Hebrew word, it. Right? So if Satan frustrates the mound, the womb that holds the vision, you will have a miscarriage. Are you hearing me? So yes, you dream these things in your night. You go to bed and dream doing this and doing that. You've dreamt these things for many years, but none has come to pass. Are you hearing me? They've prophesied things on your life. 
your husband, your children, your this, every word. People have spoken. You almost know every word. You've written them down. You've gone on prayer mountains for them, fasted for them, done everything for them. But they are not coming to pass. And some of you are past child giving time spiritually. You're out of time. It's a small little thing that can frustrate the timing of the operation of the things of the Spirit. And once that is done, physically, everything starts to have a nose dive in your life. Why? Because some of you don't understand how the seasonings and times of God work. Even in the earthly time, even when you're talking about adaptation, you must relate it with the timing of the Spirit. You understand what I'm saying? That's why the Bible says, a word rightly spoken, a word rightly spoken. The message Bible says, a word spoken at the right time. The word must be rightly spoken. It is a fitted experience in the spirit realm for the word of God that is working in your life to be spoken in the time and season it should be spoken. Some of you speak words out of season. <laughs> That's why he equates the place of a man planted in the house of the Lord, right? as a tree that is planted by the water what? side. The Bible says, who produces fruit? Who bringeth forth fruit? In his season. That means in every womb, the child comes out. The Bible says, it's not the God who allows a woman to conceive and she does not bring forth a child. He's not a God. He's not the one who allowed you to get the dreams you got and they don't come to pass. He's not the God who allowed you to conceive that child and that child does not carry the full semesters to birth. That is not God. That's why I don't believe in miscarriages. Oh, I had a miscarriage, Pastor. Uh, it is the Lord's doing. God does not miscarry babies. That's not God. That is why if you're here and you've had a miscarriage before, I decree and I declare as a man of God, at the sound of my voice, listen, it will never happen again on your life. It has been canceled. Somebody shout hallelujah. But it's easy to speak when you're talking about physical babies. What about the spiritual? What about the dreams many of you have had for so many years? You dream these things, but you're growing old, and every other day you're asking yourself, when, how, which day, which time? Because, like I said, if he can change the mouth, the season, and the laws of the spirit, the Bible says, they shall be given into his hand. Satan would hold them. Until at time, and times, and the dividing of time. It's possible to have a dream, to have a vision, to have an experience given by God. And if you don't understand how to incubate it, how to respond in your season, and how to respond in your times, some of you might be so frustrated that you might not bring forth fully what God has ordained on your life. Like I said, success is not by accident. If you became successful by accident, by accident you'll go down. Somebody shout hallelujah. But if you are success by principle and pattern, you can only stay up to the glory of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Has anybody ever read of the story of Ford, the car company, the automobile car company? In 2008, there was a very huge financial crisis in America. And of course, one of the companies that were frustrated was Ford, the car company. And Ford got heavily indebted, almost to a time where they were about to file for bankruptcy. Now, because Ford is a United States brand, this is everywhere. The government of the United States comes to the boss of Ford, then, which was Bill Ford. And then it, the government tells him, we want to give you enough money to bail you out. Because the government of the United States thought, like normal people think, that the problem of Ford was liquidity, money. They think that the more liquid you are, the more you are guaranteed success. Bill Ford, then the chairman, told the United States government that I will not take your proposal because much as the company is indebted, our problem is not money. There is a bigger problem. Bill had a spiritual understanding 
I believe. I think he got an epiphany that the problem that Ford had was not a money issue. And then in his own words, he says, any company that has not learned to adapt to the prevailing realities in its own field is bound to fail regardless of how much liquid it is. He understood it. They go back into understanding what is really wrong with Ford. And when they go to research about this one company, they realize, oh, there was a lot of things that this automobile company had disconnected itself from compared to the rest of the most successful car-making companies of that time, one of which majorly Toyota was an active fellow. And they simply realized that Toyota, the company, knew how to anticipate customers' needs. Right? They look in the future and think, in this time period, if the economy is going like this, the politics are going like this, the social adaptations are like this, it is evidence that people are going to need this kind of car. So they start designing because they've designed seasons. You get it? Ford didn't know that. And it was thinking. And they thought their problem was money. Like some of you think that your problem is money. Like many pastors think that the problem with their ministry is once they get money, their ministry will move. Money has never been a ministry problem. Jesus asked his disciples, when I sent you without money, only with water and a saddle bag and shoes, did you lack anything? The disciples said, yes, you sent us without pass and script and shoes, but we lack nothing. Why did the disciples lack nothing? Because his vision brings provision. His will is his bill. Where God is, he will provide. Pastor, don't ask for money. Ask yourself, are you where God is? Are you in the perfect will of God? Are you in the perfect assignment of God? Are you in the perfect mandate of God? If you are, don't worry about money. It will come. It will come. If you have a dream, money should never be the issue. Oh, I want to be the biggest this. Don't worry. Money is not the issue. Money is an idea. It's not value. Value is you. You are the dream. You are the message. You are the picture. You are the identity. You are the light. Greater is he which is in you than he even money that is in the world. You are more than a conqueror by Christ which strengthens you. Praise be to God who always causes us to triumph and he maketh manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we dare to ask or think according to the working power that worketh in us mightily. Blessed to be a blessing with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Given all things that pertain to life and godliness. So the sufficiency is not of us as of to think of anything by us. But the sufficiency is of God who has made us able ministers, able engineers, able pilots, able business people, able fashion designers, able. Tell your neighbor money is not a problem. Where are you with God? Somebody shout hallelujah. Ford downsized by 25%. Fired a few stuff. Made overhauls. Started making smaller cars. Started respecting the environment. Made smaller fuel consumption cars. And the trajectory was up. It went up and up and up. What did Ford do? It adapted to the season and times that had left it. When the next circle came, Ford prepared itself for the next opportunity. That is why the understanding of true timing is, is preparation. To know that, yes, I missed it that time. But if it comes back this time, 
Yes, God, I know that I missed that opportunity. I don't even know where I was. I don't even know what I did or how I did it. Maybe things did happen the way I wanted them. Yes, I understand. But God, let me prepare myself this one more time. That if the opportunity comes this time, I take it. Some of you are in a preparation period. Yes, maybe you missed it last week. It's available again. It's available again. I have grown to understand by the person of Jesus Christ that the circles become smaller at the ounce of revelation. When you understand how the spirit of revelation works, okay, if you missed the word of last week, on this one, take yours. If last year you were simply sitting in a chair, you were trying to understand. Okay, today you have understood. Receive your word today. Somebody said hallelujah. He's a God of second chance. He's a God of third chance. He's a God of first chance. He's a God of fifth chance. Teach us to number our days. We shall apply our hearts unto your wisdom. The circle becomes smaller as revelation comes. Wisdom comes understanding come he says i will give knowledge and understanding to them for i know the secret things of the deep and i am with light once i illuminate them least at any time the bible says they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and their hearts should understand and should be combated and what did he say that i will i will i will ah oh, he says i should heal them why do you think the man at the pool of Bethesda, 38 years. Why do you think without the pool he got healed? He met revelation. If you have understood it, shout amen. He met the person of revelation, Jesus Christ, the spirit of the prophecy and the prophetic. When he met Jesus, at the appearance of Jesus, listen. At any time, Jesus again said, Matthew 13, 15. He says, for these people's heart is wax gross, and their eyes are dull of hearing. Their eyes they have closed. List, 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 list. At any time, they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should, again, be converted when there's a should on the sight and the should on the hearing, and the should on the heart understanding, and the should on the conversion, on the side of God, there is a should to work for you. Somebody shout amen. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Ratalaba <laughs> Rinda reke zike pro lobo zile ke lando sa. Satara manda zabaka. Rike raba zele hezike le pro lo monda zike te le pa. Rire ke zere le ke mando solo ba. Rire bako seke te le pa raba. Rila ma zele ba. Every occasion of revelation makes the rotation. To the time appointed. You can conceive now and give birth to child now. And tomorrow morning, you can become another man by now. Listen, God doesn't need 20 years. That is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Bible says He can take sin out of the world in one day. The God I'm talking about can change your destiny now. He can change your event now. He can change your family now. He can change your ministry now. He can change your child now. He can heal your body now. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Do I have a witness? Tell your neighbor, believe in the God of now. There are usually three parts. Ask a woman, she will tell you what I mean. The waters are breaking. The child comes out. 
and the womb that carried. We are going to pray a prayer. This is the time. This is your season. Come on, open your mouth and pray. 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 Now. 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 Hey. Now. Now. A barren woman is conceiving. Sereketere. Brazakata. Now. Your business is getting its standards. Now, they are calling you for a job tomorrow morning. Now, your sponsors are here. Now, signs, miracles, and wonders are following you. Now, now, speak now. Changing me and changing you. We have God with open heart. Oh, let me send words deeper. What's a hope? What's a blessing? Keep the hope. In this world where we roam, ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words long preserved for our world. Oh, in this world, they be Goes on heart, oh let the ancient world be perfect. Ancient words of the truth, changing me and changing you. We have come with so.
each recording in his word. Hallelujah. Each record in his word. Hallelujah. This song that you and me. come around again for you. That's why the lines fall in pleasant places. That's why the paths are dropping with greatness. That is why you go through troops and bound high fences. That is why God is with you. His word will never fail. Somebody receive every word that has been spoken tonight. Holy Spirit, move. 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 <laughs> move. Come, Holy Ghost! Move! That's it, that's it. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Your destiny is changing. You're entering a new realm and place of function. Come, Holy Ghost! Oh my God, the power of God is here. 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 Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. God is anointing somebody. For nation, I see it. Where are they, God? Where are they, God? Where are they, God? Where are they, God? Come on, Nations are calling you. I see nations opening for you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Your voice spirit is leaving Uganda. I know who I'm talking to. Where are they, Holy Ghost? 
Where are they? Oh my God. Your voice spirit is leaving Uganda. Your frequency is leaving the continent. It's going across the continents of the world. The seas and the oceans are listening. The satellites are carrying your voice. Television stations are carrying your voice. Radio stations are carrying your voice. Your testimony is going beyond your tribe, your color, your skin, your education level, your network. Holy Spirit, touch those individuals. You are great. 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 Oh, you are great. You are great. You are great. Praise God. You are great. Everything we can about you is great. This is my brother. Demons tremble at your presence. What a mighty God we serve. God gives you access by faith. Faith is your time. Receive your healing now. Tumors are living. Blood diseases are living. Nervous system issues are living. Back issues are healing now. 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 Ulcers are healing now. Tumors are living now. Deaf ears are opening now. Blind eyes are seeing now. New opportunities are opening now. 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 Not tomorrow. Now. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give the Lord a miracle of praise. So if you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, you're going to repeat this one after time. Say, Lord Jesus, today I have had your word. I have had your testimony. And I choose to give you my life and receive your life. Tonight I receive you as my Lord and Savior and born again. I believe that you died and rose again for me. Receive me, feel me, change me. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Scenario Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041 466 4291 or email us at scenario at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.scenario.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.